Hey guys, welcome back to Yes Users Cafe and also to the second part of our engaging podcast series with Anirudh Das. He is the mind behind Real Educators. In our previous episode, we explored his journey of establishing Zeal Educators and also the problems of scaling your startup beyond India. Today, we dive deeper into Anirudh's college life. We'll also hear a couple of interesting stories from his first two startups and learn about how and why he started Das Consulting. Prepare to be inspired by this multifaceted conversation. So, Anirudh, welcome back to Yes Users Podcast. Yeah, we, we go stop ourselves. You know, you had such an interesting profile and we had so much questions to ask. Uh, we decided uh, and, you know, the first part is doing really well. There have been great feedback. We are coming in. So, a lot of people have put in some comments as to the things they wanted to know. And I'm going to ask that uh, in this podcast. Right. So, uh, you know, one of the amazing things uh, in your profile or in your professional journey is that you started really young, right? So you started your entrepreneurship, I guess, in the college, in the school itself, right? Yes. Please, please. So please, please, for our listeners, under please explain that journey. How was it? What problems did you face? So I started back when I was in grade 11. Right. And that was my first attempt to start something. I was very keen into technology. I was very keen into softwares and computers and stuff. And I'm talking about the time where technology was not so easily available to everyone and was not so convenient as well. So I started a software solution company where we used to help people to resolve software issues. It was kind of that. And I started, I was alone. Then I partnered with a few of my friends. But as we all were very young at that age. So starting anything, launching anything, we faced a lot of troubles. Basic troubles, we were not having any bank account of ours. We were not, basically, yeah. we were trying to, but we could not establish ourselves as a legitimate entity at that time because of the heat fact. In the eyes of the customers, you were definitely a legitimate entity, but it was... We could not establish it uh, in like, front yeah. of the public, right. Okay. So uh, we were very young. We were not in the position to ask for capital itself from the parents because what are we going to say? And the first question what we were thrown up with was focus on your studies and exams. Uh And with time, what happened is exams came into action and slowly, slowly we tried, we tried. We had a couple of clients. They showed trust in us. They had faith. We tried. We worked for a couple of months. Then eventually it failed. Then once we completed the grade 12, we started our e-commerce platform. Yeah. We were very keen into e-commerce. So, so, so about the software platform, right? I know, like you call it a failure, but I wouldn't classify it that because, you know, at that age, even trying, I would say was a success where like majority, I would 99.9% are not doing anything, right? Uh, at least in e-commerce, other things definitely they are doing. Uh, at least in business, right? Uh, in other aspects of their life, they might be doing well, Right. So my question was like, how did you guys start it? Where did you put, uh, like, where did you guys register a domain? And uh, uh, where did you advertise? What was the initial conversations like? Like, please. So the most interesting part is the domain thing. Like, uh, right. people still have a dilemma about domains and websites that it's a very technical thing, very tough. But the reality is very different. And the reality is different from a very long time. Like when I started, there was some plug and play options and a little bit of coding was needed. And as we were uh, computer science students, so we were well versed with the coding part. So we tried to start a web page. We launched it. Then we started to advertise for it, like posting it on Facebook, posting it on Twitter and posting it on Gmail because we had email of a lot of people. So we started email marketing at that time. We thought that, uh, okay, let's reach out to people. So let's push this uh, content through email to other people who are known to us. Then uh, there were some... Uh, what was the target audience, in at least in your head at that time? Like, who, who you thought would be your ideal customer? Those basically who had a computer in their place. They were having a computer. They were our audience because, let's say, I'm, I'm working with Microsoft itself, but Windows computers always give trouble. Right. What we have faced so far. Yeah. 
So at that time, I was also a Windows user and I was also facing some issues. So I thought that everyone is facing that issue. Let's try to solve it. And the market was solving it, but we started to solve it for a lower price band. Okay. Which year was this? Which? Yes, it, it's I'm talking about 2016, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. We, we tried, we hustled, but uh, it, it needed a lot of effort and time which we were not able to put into because we were also school students. So we had a lot of boundaries set with us. Yeah. Like uh, by 8 p.m. you have to reach back to your home and you can't stay up late at night or you have to study, you have to focus on your exams, your grades also matter, everything. So uh, what happened is when this thing came out into notice of other people, people started to ask like questions like what is he doing why is he not studying and all these like started to accumulate as you know it happens and yeah. it was very natural i don't blame anything it was very natural also we were not a very strong team we were a team of two three friends only after that we moved into an e-commerce business when we completed our schooling so in that we are basically planning to pick up products which are specialties of india and supply it everywhere in the other marketplaces. And amazingly, now after a couple of years have passed, when I scroll Instagram or when I scroll social media, I can see those kind of businesses are flourishing. So it makes me really happy that whatever idea I had in mind is actually coming into action and it's actually worth something. So people are doing that. Even the software ones I'm talking about, there are a lot of businesses who are working on these particular criteria. And I, I personally keep a track of it. Like I see how they are doing it and what we could have done. It's, it's like a nostalgic thing for us because once I also tried to be that particular business, but eventually I failed there. There were multiple factors, but yeah, one thing which I want to mention is that the learning, that is irreplaceable. When you start something and when you fail at it, you really learn a lot. Because yeah. once I started Zeal Educators, I had the experience of being a, not successful in the model of doing wrong things with the past two businesses. So it really helped me. It really helped me understand that how you can sustain your business because the major problem was not idea. Idea is never the problem in a business. The problem is execution and sustaining that model. Right. So failing into two businesses was really a lesson which I needed. I must say it was a much needed lesson because you cannot learn it anywhere. No teacher can teach you, no school, no college will give you this thought. Yeah. So you have to do it yourself. And I encourage young entrepreneurs that they must try. No matter if they fail, it doesn't matter. There's nothing to lose. Yeah. And I will tell you these two failures and the third one that is Z. In all these three, I was having no funding, no backup, no industry support, no connections. I was having no connections. Like nobody was knowing me. I was only having a small circle, although I, from the very beginning, I had a small circle. I never had a big circle. So the circle was very small. But if your idea is good and if you are executing it and if you are hustling towards it, like it's a simple thing that you have to wake up daily and you have to work on it. There is no shortcut. Makes sense. So tell us some interesting story from the your first two businesses. Yeah. So from the first business, what happened is I uh, got a client and the client's address was pretty distant from my place. Mm -hmm. I, I took my parents' car because it was a very distant place. I preferred not to go by the two-wheeler. I preferred my parents' car. And I, I used to drive from a very young age. When I was in grade 7 or 8, I started driving. So I took the car from parents and I reached the place of the client. And when the client saw me coming in a car, he was like very shocked. Like somebody is coming to provide some uh, software service and is coming in a car. It was very shocked. And the client was very keen to know about me. And that was the first breakthrough. And that particular client gave me around five, six more clients. And that was like very interesting conversation there. It was a very old couple. He was uh, the at the age of my dadaji, I guess. Yeah. He was that time around his 75 or 80. And, and that old Man was very inspiring. He like motivated me a lot because I was trying to hustle and trying to do something. So he wasn't expecting me to come like a school boy is coming to give such kind of uh, software service. He wasn't expecting that. So that was a pretty amazing experience. With e-commerce, I would say we, we basically started a proper venture. We registered ourselves. We had a partnership business. We worked. We basically traveled around. 
we did a lot of hustle but at the end what happened was the team was not combined enough to showcase the products because that was basically we feel that pre launch itself because it was not working out idea was correct idea was good it was going fine everything was in place we had the suppliers we had the platform there were four partners so i was there doing the tech part one was doing the marketing part one was doing the product outsourcing and all but eventually it couldn't work out i don't know why it didn't work out because right now i can see businesses working out with the same pattern mine didn't work out so i took some lessons from that and then i chose my path differently i was like yeah. let's go to college because parents were also concerned what are you doing why are you wasting your time go to college study get a degree and all so i moved ahead with that so so did you t- take a drop year after uh, graduating from class 12 yeah i guess i was also preparing for a competitive exam so yeah I- right so in the eyes of parents who is like i'm preparing but preparing for competitive exam but you were like doing the business right so it was a year or two how how long was one it one year one year one year so yeah so you like you know you did what a lot of students do so and didn't end up wasting any time so you go to college right so what course did you pursue there i did my btech in banaras hindi university oh wow okay so you did your btech and now i hear that you are a cpa as well yes okay so how did that how did this transition happen then i did my mtech and then i applied okay. for a cpa course there was a campaign going on in our college that if you want to excel into a different field let's say finance itself then you can apply and the college was very supportive because manas hindi university is a big name so it was very supportive that time so i applied there i got a chance they had a few questions and few tests regarding this finance things and i was very keen because i was already running my business real educators was already live into action so i was already doing the numbers on a regular basis so i was well aware of how the numbers work and also i was global by that time so i was dealing with global like all these feed our reports and all this global export phenomenon as a lot so it was pretty comfortable for me to move in then i studied that course that course really helped me a lot it gave me a new insight about how money and business works okay so that's really interesting right you know i wanted to talk about your experience at bhu right so how was it it was good <laughs> that's a <laughs> <the> lifetime experience <laughs> there's a, there's a very long story you are not sharing there so tell me so what happened you land uh, like you know you are a bachcha who has you know done uh, try to do startup ek sal drop bhi le liya and then you, you land in bhu in a btech right so what happened what was going in your head the first day i was always like a guy just go tradition was not a cup of tea the jo chal raha hai i was not willing to follow that i was like yeah kya karte hain let's do something different and the crazy thing was i was alone in it most of the yeah. I was alone because uh, I am I belong from Varanasi it's a tier 2 tier 3 city so people are mostly following the tradition that's not the problem with the people or the place but that's the culture how it goes and what I was trying to do was considered too risky and what I felt like I cannot go into that traditional path because I cannot do that I was like very sure about it that ye abhi mere se nahi hoga my mind is not ready for it your desire to be different right and i this is something i see in a lot of entrepreneurs right so you were born and brought up in baranasi yes right and you got a college in banaras as well how 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 bad did you feel about that <laughs> actually f- firstly when I, when i was preparing for my college i wasn't expecting to be going to bhu itself because firstly it was pretty difficult to get into that and secondly i i, I also wished to go out in the different city live a different kind of life but eventually what happened is when i got selected and when i got a chance in bhu the best thing was that if i'm standing in my apartment's corridor i can see my college that's oh. how that, that's how close you were staying yes right so in the hindsight do you think it was a good thing or it was a bad thing if you take my case where i have yeah. to do a lot of work apart from college studies it was great because i just needed 5 minutes to go to my classroom yeah so i used to wake up early do all my work in the business needed everything every meeting every planning everything i put it into place then just 5 minutes before i leave for class once the class is done 
nothing else just i am directly rushing back to my home because my home was my office yeah that was the time table i followed that was like i did mostly with my friends and all but i kept myself dedicated towards my work more yeah and to be like at at that point of time they were not liking me very much because i was not a very social person at that time because i was having something else in my mind okay although i'm a very social person i like to hang out with friends i like to talk everything but at that time i was building it so it was asking for 24/7 inputs yeah i whenever i got a chance let's say there is a class gap that yeah today you don't have a class you have a 4 hour gap i rushed back into my place yeah so that's how it was so i was like constantly rushing from home to college college to home that's it yeah and that wasn't a big deal for you because you had like the, the no, disc that was fine i had planned to ask so many stories about bhu hostel because i've heard a lot of rumors about it uh, i was having a hostel room as well because that is come to that way yeah <laughs> because it's a residential university yeah. right but obviously you were not staying there right uh, I, stayed, i stayed a couple of weeks i stayed like it was a very no uh, thing of a choice because my home was very close to it so no yeah. was ask me why you are not staying in the hostel but the hostel was mandatory so i was having the hostel itself and yes we have stories in the hostel itself you know <laughs> and the stories okay uh, tell, me, tell me the the, the funniest story that you can share on camera <laughs> with be to the thing is the stories are not that stories which i can share the like you know, that as little with every college <laughs> that's like crosses the limits every time and this yeah. is a like a young aggressive university so a lot of things happen on a regular basis so we were like uh, we have done mass bunks where the warden was our professor itself okay and when we did a mass bunk the warden itself walked into the hostel to see where are we and the whole class was hiding in a single room <laughs> the whole group of 30 35 boys were hiding in a single room which is meant to accommodate only two to three people yeah we shut the door we closed the lights and all and eventually the warden got an idea that we are staying in this particular room yeah the professor was very kind hearted even <laughs> <laughs> we just given a warning okay and and actually we we traveled the teacher a lot because he was going around and around throughout the big hostel and finding where is everyone mm. because he, he got to know that uh, we are not coming to class intentionally uh, sometimes in college we do such thing yeah that's <laughs> the we are that at the time right apart from that we had done a lot of mischiefs as well which we shouldn't do like uh, there was a episode which we saw for bussy yeah was it was saying about water cooler I guess every college hostel has faced something like that. We have also done something like that, a bit different. That we didn't throw it up; we just dragged it from the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> like all friends were drunk and all, and after that stage, students are students, young boys are young boys. So we do what we used to do, and every college has the pretty same story. Yeah, that that that's the thing that. when when these young boys are drunk and all in a party mode they do whatever they want like they don't care what yeah. they're doing absolutely it was it apart from that now now on yeah. camera do you want to apologize to your teachers now that you know you <laughs> guys to my teachers for me that so much trouble like from the very beginning now i was a trouble maker kid from the start right. i i used to give troubles like it was like a khurafat karna was in me ki aap thoda sa to karte hain Right. Never to hurt someone or to disrespect someone just for fun. Yeah, victimless crimes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So abhi right now, are you staying close to BHU as well, or you are staying? Yes, my okay. my permanent home is close to BHU. Right. So how does that feel? Like every day you are passing from your alma mater. How does that feel? It feels pretty good. See <laughs> new new faces, new people, new students. they are also moving around with a lot of hopes and dreams yeah it's a place where you can fulfill your dream because the knowledge you gain here is something different every college gives knowledge but yeah. this it gives you a life this college gives you life but one thing which a lot of times we forget is that in this college you need to work hard as well. not just for your academics but on yourself you have to work 
Okay. Like you have to work hard in a different way. You have to prepare your mind. If you are not preparing your mind, na, you will face trouble in the upcoming time. So what? What I feel for a young generation that do the fun, have the life, but also train your mind, because life is beyond academics and degrees. Because right now nobody is asking my degree. Nobody will ever uh, get a look up of my degree that what grades I have got. Yeah. how i have prepared my mind and how i am executing it in the real basis so that's what i emphasize to my juniors as well that work on yourself yeah. as much as we can because we don't have much time honestly speaking agar hum school college ke time na shuru kare then we are late <laughs> there yeah. are saying that we are never late but my perspective says that that's the best time kyunki tab na zyada pressure nahi hota hai ab yeah. we have pressure and responsibilities but the time when i started i was not having any kind of pressure or responsibilities yeah bahut zyada hoga to kya hoga ek paper mein back aa jayegi nahi pad payenge to that's it but now in real life you don't have a option to get a back in a paper or you cannot give a back paper or something so you have to play more accurate in real life you get a kick on your back yes. <laughs> instead of getting a back on your paper true, true, true. <laughs> right so you spend four years jo kilam aise chutki mein nikal gaye honge right yeah. So, comes placement season. ये बीएचयू का प्लेसमेंट का सीन क्या है? Honestly speaking, मैं बैठा ही नहीं था. That is true. I I figured that much. But like in general, what is the scene? The scene is very diverse. मैंने पता है ना, if you are working on yourself, तो जो जो भी प्लेसमेंट के लिए कंपनीज आती हैं, they basically don't hire you for the degree you have. They hire you for the person you are. So आपने जितना एक्सप्लोर करा है ना, based on that, you get the placement. and sir campus placement in campus ke bahar bhi there are placements abhi i would say the trend of placements is very jiggly it's not very stable these days yeah pehle pehle ke time mein bhi it was the thing that jo bhi thoda out of the box hota hai jiski bhi thinking ideology aisi hoti jo company ke sath align kar sakti hai hmm. wo tabhi hoti hai when you are working on yourself like aapne uh, course padha hua but you don't have any extra skill so ho sakta hai aapko it na But right. if you have learned that course well, and you have some extra skills as well, which you can bring on board, then definitely you will be the first preference there. And I guess yes, sub jaga everywhere is the same. Makes sense. Skill sets matter. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you know, see, what for the what for the funny things I like over here heard someone saying is that there is an oil engineering in BHU which gets a very good placement. Right. Is that a fact? Yes, our UCL comes directly for the recruitment process. Indian Oil directly involves into the recruitment process, not just with the chemical engineering part, but those who are professionals in chemistry itself. From there also, they pick candidates on a regular basis because IOCL is something who is working on a regular basis. उसके साथ क्या है वो demand and supply पे चल रहा है और उसकी demand बढ़ती जा रही है. Fuel is something which you always need. Right. And all those companies जो necessities पे चल रहे हैं, they always survive. Yeah, and another factor is aluminium. That right, very strong with IOCL. Right, a lot of professors, postdoctorate candidates are there in IOCL. So, what is the typical pay package that gets in BHU? The typical pay package, I would say, if somebody is good enough, twenty twenty five and a year is good pack is normal. Or oil engineering le typical pay package kya jaate? In IOCL, as it's a PSU, the range is a slight lower, but the perks are more. It's around fifteen to eighteen like this. But eventually, when you go and you are going as a junior, once you get promoted and you learn and you gain experience, definitely the career is more stable in that perspective. Right. So I used to be like big tech companies like Meta, Microsoft. Do do these come in? Then what what do they? Microsoft, Google, they do come in, but not always. And also, uh, a lot of students have got placement by uh, direct approach because they have built themselves in such a way that they are able to face the interview directly. They are not waiting for yeah. us. But once the placement is done, obviously it would be posted as the student from this particular university got selected and got that. Right. So you know we here like I know um, IIT Delhi, IIT Bombay, they are carrying, uh, they are getting like a one point two five crore, one point five crore, like these kind of numbers. So is this an outlier in BHU or like how many students in a year get placements like these? 
in every big university you will have such students who crack these kind of packages but the number is really low not everybody is going to get this package few will and obviously in a bunch of 50 100 or 200 students there would be a few candidates who are exceptional who are like out of the box thinkers who have built their skill sets so much like i have known uh, students who have been working from grade 11 12th and they have built their profile so strong that they are expert in a lot of fields let's say if i talk about the tech background only so they are master in tech when they are completing their uh, graduation itself so obviously when they are going to face an interview they are going to crack it comparing it with just somebody who has completed the college degree if we compare it so definitely yeah, they will have a upper hand yeah i could feel yeah and you know what is misleading about uh, these kind of headlines because they they grab a lot of attention like you know is somebody from iit delhi got 2 crore ka package right but what they don't understand that is it are they getting 2 crore in india or are they getting 2 crore in the us right yeah. yes because that makes a lot of difference right yeah. because 2 crore if they are getting 2 crore in the us it it's like you know uh, 200 uh, somewhere around uh, a little above 200000 dollars right, right? so which is not a not a big deal in the invest average bit. right so so that that's uh, so somebody like you know somebody got that placement that's nice but like as far as the quantum of pay is concerned it's not a really big deal i will give you the real insight about it as i'm a cpa as well i have clients who are working in the us and microsoft and google itself i have a few clients who are working in google if we take their packages because i'm their uh, certified accountant so i know every number i have seen every number i have seen the w2s w2s is a document which they get when they receive their yeah. payment yeah i have the insights of the number i won't disclose any particular number but i will tell you that depends on where you are based out in us the location where you are living because every location has a different cost of living based out of that apart from that a majority of that pay is in the form of esops in india itself it is happening like a few of my known have a package of around 1 1.2 annually but a major chunk is of esops the company right. is esops so esops is not what you get cash in hand but the indian parent what they think is that yeah 1 crore is a cash in hand no it's not that cash in hand yeah ctc that is cost to company and that is why i mentioned that financial literacy is also very important in our country apart from just giving classical education because they don't get the concept of ctc if i talk about my parents so they also don't have the idea of ctc they don't so if they see a number that yes 1 crore and here so they will see that yeah that's a good number but that's not the truth also in india that kind of package is pretty difficult to digest because in hand no company is giving like that yeah there are few companies giving and few individuals who are deriving that kind of salary but we have to look for it let's say there is a company who is in us and giving a handsome package to somebody in india in the indian division so the main reason is that the pay scale of india is pretty lower if let's say the same company has to hire someone in the us the company has to pay much more okay and that is the misleading factor which we have firstly that is the ctc that is not the cash in hand you are getting apart from that there is a big number of esops which in my opinion are pretty good for nothing if you have it. what will you do you cannot sell it there is a lock in on that it's not like normal demat account shares that you can have it and you can sell it on the open market you cannot right there is a vesting period clause people forget right and if you leave before a certain period which is called cliff right uh, you you get zero shares right yeah. and this is something that a lot of people don't understand and uh, when even when you talk about esop like you know getting a esop from amazon is completely different from getting an esop from a, you know a, a startup which has raised series b even though that startup is doing really well but they are completely two different ball games <laughs> we should do a podcast on that aspect itself yes yeah. right but moving on like you know you have been advocate of like intersecting finance and education to, yes. so what initiative and efforts are you doing in this specific area so firstly uh, when i'm uh, working with uh, zeal educators in that i'm emphasizing those teachers who are dealing with the commerce division i'm emphasizing that don't just uh, teach them bookish things compare it with the real life let's say in economics and in uh, accounts 
everything is very bookish and what i emphasize to my teachers is that compare it with the real scenario what is going on right now like with economics if you have a closer look you will see how the historian period had an economic arrangement now what we have the currency trade system the reality basically the students are missing out from the real factors okay so i emphasis on that mostly and when i'm working with das consulting in that i help my clients educate i educate them first that how these things work because they come to me with a lot of problems and they know nothing about their uh, payment structure or the finances or how to manage although they are qualified individuals they have cracked big packages they are in google amazon microsoft i have clients from those companies as well and they are like in um, big uh, positions they are drawing a good amount of salary every year and still they are not educated in that perspective so it worries me a lot that if somebody who has cracked goes and these are all people who are from my nearby location yeah from malaba somebody is from bangalore somebody is from kanpur and all that like up so as pass ke log i am seeing that nearby people who have cracked so much in life they have moved from this particular part of the city to a, another country and flourishing there if they are not aware of it how am i going to expect that these local people who are around me are aware of it because if you compare and do an analysis obviously they have explored more who have settled in us definitely they have explored a lot more than somebody who is settling in the same city if they are not aware how these people are going to be aware so we have to educate them as well and educating people in a mass number is a big challenge yeah so there is a lot of traditional ideologies as well so people are not easily like they are not ready to blend their minds yeah that something could be happening like this itself a bit with the indian taxation itself people are not completely aware of it there are so many benefits of it like people say in business we have to do a lot of trouble and all and all but they don't know the real benefits we have a lot of benefits and not from like past few years from the very beginning we had if you don't know finances how you're going to make your life easy and better that's my first question you know your subject that's great and everybody who is studying their subject knows it well definitely if somebody has put in like 6 to 8 years or 10 years dedicated to that particular subject that person knows but if you don't know finances you are eventually not going to manage it well and at some point of time you will need the financial knowledge be it building your first home buying your first car starting your first business or let's say you are selling something like if you are willing to sell a property then also you will have some financial issues understanding those concepts taxes because like i will give an example recently a client of mine from us asked me that uh, i am going to sell a parental property and they are asking me for a uh, 20% of tds directly from the transaction and you can imagine a 20% is a big chunk now most of the people are not aware that we have a dual tax avoidance treaty going on with india and us with canada itself we have and with the other countries as well we have these the rules are different but we have that dual tax avoidance treaty so we have to use that into action and i will tell you one interesting thing that if you don't mention that there is a treaty the departments are not going to give you any intimation that yes there is a treaty you don't have to pay taxes two times they will take the taxes two times that's their job uh that's what they do so these kind of troubles if you are going ahead in your life you will do some financial activities you will face these issues well said i think that from the very beginning you should be a bit aware of it yeah makes sense and you know as again this is the rapid fire round right now so my first question is if you could swap lives with any historical figure dead or alive right who would be that person If you could give me some option, that would be great. <laughs> no, you can have anyone, right? Mahatma Gandhi, Nehru Ji, uh, Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, right? Any historical figure, or you know, anybody that you admire, like you know, Einstein, or uh, what? Tesla would be the person. Tesla, okay. okay. If you you know what they say about Tesla, Tesla was a genius, but he was not a good uh, businessman. <laughs> Edison was a good businessman. So, so given a choice between being a genius or being a good businessman, which one do, would you prefer? I would say, in both the perspectives, I have a lot to learn. 
but if i if you if i get to choose from the historic person i would firstly choose to be a genius first you're right because the discoveries you get when your mind is working on a different piece certainly it is different okay and basically i i admire nikola tesla a lot a lot of things have been done by him i've read a few books about him so i like feel a connection like yeah this person is someone like he was always a out of the box thinker yeah out of the box thinker kind of person and mentally he was not very stable mentally he was not a calm person he was like always the mind was acting in war like a war like situation and when i think or when i plan something i also put myself in a war like mode like if i have to fix some problem i have to keep my mind in a war position that is i have to fix it no matter how typical the problem is or no matter if i know this thing or not if i don't know thing i will start learning it i will start grasping knowledge and then i will use it immediately no matter if i fail i will fail again i will try again so i am that kind of aggressive person if i try to solve a problem i like i don't care if i know it or not right i believe that first we have to know it first we have to learn it i am like we can learn we can apply learn again apply again because if we apply it again and again we are gaining experience yes yeah. my view. absolutely so see see the 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 high five terms for this is bias towards action and iterative learning right so whenever you are trying to solve the like have a little more bias towards the action rather than just the you know doing it in the theory right and mm-hmm. up, whatever it is you have just apply it and next time improve it right so you know this brings me to a very interesting question like if i give you uh, a superpower that you can have any feature which can do anything that you want however outrageous that may be what would be that feature that you would like to add to your current platform i would wish to add technical expertise to everyone who is involved in my platform be it my student be it my colleague right. be it my teachers or be it my viewers itself or the audience i would i would like to add the technical expertise to everyone because that's what we are missing out right now yeah i just so, basic define technical, technical expertise means ability to code what is that term coding is coding is basically thinking coding is right. think like uh, like we see that coding is about language and all no coding is basically a way to communicate with the computers right yeah so that that's basically language like english is a language hindi is a language like coding is also a language so not that basically what happens is people are not using their eyes well like you are using a computer right everything is in english if something is popping up people are scared to touch it why to why you are scared to touch it just go for it you can read english if you can read english in my belief you can for solve the technical problems you can handle the gadgets and my basic problem is with people that people are still facing issues in this generation itself wherever they get some complicated program or something in front of them they are like very you know skippy towards it they don't want to face it they want to skip it i i don't prefer it i want that explore because you know english and in my opinion in my company also i tell everyone the same thing that if you are well versed with english you can use any technology present currently yeah nothing is beyond that it's all language and communication technology is not something like different right it's a device which is helping you do things faster right why not use that yeah so what i am referring to is empowering people with problem solving skill right <laughs> yes right uh, because i feel if you can develop that skill it helps you a lot in every aspect right and problem solving is not just what you're seeing on computer like in general life as well like if something is coming how to systematically approach that and this is a teachable thing this is a teachable skill right so it can be learned and it can be taught okay yes. moving on um, see imagine an alternate world where you're not teaching humans right you're teaching robots okay. so what kind of homework would you give to those robots i would on a daily basis give them the homework to think yeah because robots where they fail is they are not good thinkers they cannot think they can process information but they cannot think once we cover that bridge of thinking and processing and we like fuse it we are going to have a different kind of world and i guess a lot of people are doing it ai has come into action and this has been happening like with chat gpt itself when i started using it it was in a very primitive state now if you talk about it it's very smart you just need yeah. to give the right prompts like if you are giving them some data to analyze and asking him to analyze it for you 
the system is analyzing pretty well. But if you are not giving any particular prompt to it, it cannot process it. So there is no thought behind it. The process is correct, but there is no thought. So to robots, if I can, I would just give them a homework to think. Because they can think. These devices can think. I believe they can. Not today, but definitely someday they will. Yeah. Okay. Last rapid fire question. If you could have any celebrity in the world to endorse zeal educators, who would be that person and why? Tom Bruce, Tony Stark, Tony Stark, right. Robert. Yeah. Why? Because they are my childhood favorites. <laughs> uh, I love yeah. Tom Cruise for the guts he has in his movies. We have seen and we have seen in the news itself these actions were done by him on his own. And if we compare his age right now, he's like around sixty, I guess. Right, Tom Cruise is around sixty, if I'm not wrong, and still he is into such actions. And he has so much of energy. I would like him to endorse. Wow, for, for sure. <laughs> great, great answer there. So a lot of people might not know this, like, you know, you have been doing one thing really well, which is sitting here in India and selling globally, right? This is something we talked about in the last podcast as well. So as we are running out of time, give me a very short and crisp answer. Uh, what advice would you give to an entrepreneur who is also planning to do that, building in India and selling to the world? So, first of all, uh, understand the global market. What is the need there? First, target a particular country. See what's needed. Whatever your field might be. Because if you're trying to sell something, you need to solve the problem first. You cannot just give the product. Because, I would tell you honestly, any client or customer is not interested in your product. And you're not selling the product first. You are exchanging the thought and feeling with that customer. That if the customer feels that you're solving the particular problem he has, definitely you will have that customer on board. So focus on what problem they are facing in their particular field, whatever field you choose. Be it apparel, be it product, be it tech, be it services, anything. So first, do a market research and not just do complete research only that five years you are spending your time on research, but also apply. Connect with people. Try to connect with people. And today, connecting with people, we have a lot of social. So much social media is there. Reach out to people. Talk to them. First, then only thing which I would suggest young entrepreneurs who are planning to start is work on your communication and work on listening. Listen to your customers. Listen to their problems. Note it down. Have a diary. Note the problems they have and align your solution with those problems and give them a way out because customers basically need help. They don't need a product firstly. They need help. Yeah. They need solutions. So focus on that. Note down and figure it out. Do it Make multiple sense. times. You will track it. Wow, that's a great advice there. And you know, because uh, you are running Zeal Educators and Das Consulting both, I'll put in a link to both of these ventures in the description. So if any listener is interested, they can go and visit. My question is, for a first-time entrepreneur, which one would be a better choice? A B2B business like Das Consulting or a B2C business like Zeal Educators? Yeah. Start with B2C, then move to B2B. Because when you're talking about a B2B business, they have a good number of competitors working there. B2C, in B2C, I can say in most of the fields, the competition is not that high. In some fields there are, but there you have a chance to go for a small scale, fail for a small scale and try again. With B2B, what will happen is you will have to put a lot of things at risk. And if you are a, starting in your life, in your entrepreneur journey, I am not suggesting anyone to take that amount of risk because risk should always be calculated. And in B2B, if you are not backed up well, you might take an uncalculated risk. So don't do that. If you are planning to B2B, start with B2C. If see that your product is a good fit in the market or not. If it is, then reach out to B2B because you will have a viable uh, baseline to talk with the B2B. That if you are communicating with a business, you will have a baseline that yes, I have this particular amount of expertise, which I can bring on board and help your business as well. Makes sense. E two Bs are very specific. Yeah. So Anirudh, thanks a lot for coming again on the podcast and sharing your story. Trust me, it was really uh, entertaining, inspiring, all at the same time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. It was great having you.
And that concludes our captivating conversation with Anirudh. We have explored the depth and breadth of Banzil educators. We hope you have also enjoyed this two-part series as much as we have. Don't forget to follow our podcast for more insightful discussions with leaders and innovators shaping the world. Thank you for tuning in and until the next time, keep learning and keep saying yes to your user's voice.